What's up everyone, I'm Jamie and today we're going to be talking about using Starnet++ on a Mac if you don't have PixInsight. So what's the point in removing the stars uh, from your image when you're doing the processing? Uh, well certainly what I found in my workflow is that if I can remove the stars from the background and velocity um, that enables me to bring out much more finer detail in that nebulosity and really stretch the image and bring out the darker areas without at the same time completely blowing out the stars um, and just ruining them from the image as well. Um, it enables you to kind of keep the stars to one side, work on the nebulosity and then right at the end after you've done a little bit of processing on the stars you can bring them together uh, and create a final image there. Um, it's not a new technique, it's been going around for a long long time um, it's been quite difficult until Starnet came about. Um, now Starnet++ is a program that was created by a developer, I'm not sure who, um, but makes it a lot, lot, a lot easier um, to do it this way through Starnet++. Um, now if you're using PixInsight, it's really simple. I believe it's kind of built into PixInsight, um, so it's a nice easy workflow to get that done. However, I don't use PixInsight. Um, you can use it standalone. And if you're using Windows, which most people are, Windows machine, um, it's nice and easy to run that standalone outside of PixInsight as well. However, if you're running a Mac, as well as you're not using PixInsight, like me, I use a Mac and I use Photoshop to do all my processing in. It's a little bit more tricky. Um, now it's quite difficult finding some instructions on how to do that um, until I came across this post on uh, Cloudy Nights by guy called Midnight Dan and he ran it through uh, step by step and what I needed to do um, to run it. So Dan if you ever if you ever watching this I doubt you will but if you ever do then thank you very much. Um, what I would have really really appreciated at the time is just like a video run through of exactly how to do it. Um, so that is why I'm doing this video. So if you're a Mac user if you're using Photoshop to process your Astro images and you want to know how to use Starnet++, keep watching. What you should start off with is the actual location where you download Starnet++ from. Um, I've put the link in the description below the video. Uh, this is actually, it's, it's for the Mac. Um, it's that file that you want. So version 1.1, which is the latest, and then it's Starnet underscore Mac OS. Um, the link I'm going to put in is the actual link to that download straight away, so it should just start downloading straight away for you. Once that's downloaded, um, drag that from your downloads folder onto your desktop. Just makes it a nice, easy, convenient place to work from. Um, what you need to do is open up the terminal. You've got a new terminal window there. And you need to set the working directory. So to do that, you do CD space and that's current directory and then you can literally just drag that folder into the window hit enter and then that sets the working directory um, to the starnet folder right there what you're going to need to do as well is um, change the permissions in the folder um, so to do them you're going to need to type out these commands So that's that done. You might be asked for uh, your administrator password um, at any point during this process. So just type it in and hit enter. Um, I'm going to leave those commands down in the uh, in the description as well, just so you can do like a little copy and paste. Um, okay, so that's that's that bit done. The next bit is to make sure you got a a file that is usable with Starnet. So I've got um a mono file here they would ha hydrogen alpha um can't really see much on it just yet it's pretty much straight out of the stack and uh, no stretching or anything done to it so just going to quickly load it into photoshop and what we're going to do is just apply uh, some some levels stretching to it um, so i always work on a new layer so stamp that forward Command L to bring up the levels, and I'm just going to bring the midpoint 
quite far to the left. And what I'm aiming for is to get the main part of the histogram here and around the sort of 25% um, area of the histogram, of the levels area. So I'll bring that in a little bit closer. Um, so that's pretty much where I want it. Bring the black point in ever so slightly. There we are, so that's looking pretty good. That's pretty much where I want it. Um, the issue you're gonna have later on um, by doing this is I have performed a stretch and it has already kind of bloated the stars a little bit. Um, I'm open to some ideas, you know, if you've got a better way of, of doing this bit, um, leave it in the comments or just give me a, a direct message somewhere. Um, but yeah, that might produce a little bit of an issue later on um, with the actual star layer. Um, but that's, I'm pretty happy with that as it is for now. So I'm just gonna flatten the image and I'm gonna save it. It's important that um, you save it as a 16-bit file. So mine is already 16 bits and that there's no sort of layers or alpha channels or anything like that uh, that's saved on there. So that's pretty good. So we're happy with that. And you can see it's saved the, uh, the changes I've made there. So I'm just going to move that into the Starnet folder. So that's all ready to go. But we need to make a couple more changes before we actually start the process. So I'm going to be working on the mono um, area. It's not an RGB image, it's a mono image. Uh, this is a shell script file here. It's just a plain text file. So I'm just going to double click it and open it up. It's going to open up in text edit. Uh, and what you can see here is it's already populated some text for us, which is good. Um, this is the file name that you want Starnet to work on. And this is the file name that Starnet will save the starless image as. This is the stride. So you can change that to whatever you want, as long as it's an even number. Typically speaking, the lower the number, the better. Um, however, the lower the number, the slower it will run. Uh, 64 is pretty good. Um, I've worked on 32 and 128. Um, so what I'm going to do, there's two ways around this. So you can either change this text here to the name of your actual file, or you can leave this as it is and change every time you are running Starnet on a different image, you can, you can actually change the name of the image to one I want to just call test5.tiff. Um, personally, I will, because I pretty much always save my files as HA, S2, O3, RG or B or L. Um, I'll just go in here and I'll just change that so that it knows to work on the HA.tiff, which is this, HA.tiff. It will save the stylus version as HA underscore S.tiff. And the stride that I'm going to work on is 64. Um, I'm actually going to change that to 256, which I would never normally do. I'm just doing it for the purpose of this tutorial, just to make it nice and quick. Um, so I'm pretty sure you can just close that and it will automatically save it. But let's just double check that. Yeah, so you can literally just close the window and that will auto save it. All right, so now that's edited, um, what you can do is simply just drag that straight into there and you can hit enter. Um, however, what it would do is because it was downloaded from the internet rather than the, the Mac App Store, um, you'll probably get this error message. So just hit cancel, um, open up system preferences. Um, what you need to do is go to security and privacy. And then you'll get this message here. And you just want to hit allow anyway. And then it will give you another warning message saying, are you bas basically are you sure you want to do this? Hit yeah, open. You're going to have to keep doing this basically for everything that it needs. Uh, might be another one, yeah. 
So these are all basically files within this folder. The, the operating system is telling you it's not sure if it's malware or not. And there you go. So once you basically got through all of the different files and given your Mac operating system the permission to run those files, even though they weren't downloaded from the Mac App Store, um, it will then start the process. So remember, you just need to drag the edited shell script text file into the terminal window, hit enter, and it will give you a load of text here, just a load of random stuff, not really random, but a load of stuff it's telling you about the file. And then you'll get, after a few seconds, you'll get this percentage, and this will keep going up as it works along. Um, and you can see on my Mac, when I set the stride number to 256, um, it runs pretty quick. Um, that's because it's quite a high stride number. And the Mac that I'm running is a 2014 MacBook Pro, so it's not, not a new Mac. You can probably hear the fan actually running in the background. So I'm going to um, pause the video here and we'll come back when it's back at 100%. Starting it's finished running. It's got us, uh, got us a message there that says it's done. Uh, and my Mac has finished taking off. Um, it's nice and quiet now, which is lovely. So what you can see up here then, you've got the original HJ file and then HA underscore S is the stylus image, I say. So we'll just open up the image and we'll have a look. So there's the original, and there's the stylus version. So even though I've set the stride to a really high number of 256, it actually doesn't look like it's done a, a bad job, to be honest. Star Seder is, um, it's not really dealt with that too well. And uh, as we go along in the process, you'll see when we do further stretching to the image that you will have those artifacts that will they'll make themselves apparent. Okay, cool. The, uh, the only other thing that I forgot to mention uh, a little bit earlier was all of these texts, um, all of this text that we entered in earlier, you'll only have to do that the one time. Um, if we do it again, so I'll literally I'll close that terminal window and I'll open up another one. The only things you're going to have to do again are set the current directory, so cd space drag the folder in. You need to make sure you're working on a 16-bit mono or RGB file with no extra channels on there, no alpha layers or anything like that. Make sure you've got the file names set correctly and make sure you've got the stride numbers set correctly. And I'm going to put mine back to 32 there. Once that's all set up, drag that in, hit enter, and there you go. So you don't have to do any of the setup uh, like you did before. So it's nice and easy to run it. So I'm just going to stop that process now. I'm going to take both of my files out of the Starnet folder and we're going to work on these now. So we've got the original file and we have the stylus version. Um, so let's go, let's open up the original file. And what I want to do is I want to create a third file, which is just the stars. Uh, and it's really easy to do. Open up your original file, stick the stylus file on top as a new layer, and you want to change the blending mode to difference. And that is literally just going to put the difference between the two files, uh, and that is the stars. Merge those two layers together, and what you want to do is make sure you save it as a new file. You don't want to overwrite either of the two files. So I'm just going to put mine as stars. So there we go, so my original file, stylus file and just the stars. So I'm just going to 
quickly open up the stylus file, do some basic stretching, and I'll show you uh, the benefit of having just the stars as a separate file. So let's put the white point a bit closer. Give it a little bit more of a stretch. Just doing this real quick, just for the purpose. I'm not gonna do anything more than that, cool. So actually, it's done a pretty good job, even at stride 256, I'm quite impressed with that. Um, now what I was saying earlier is you will have some artifacts left over. So you can see here, um, these are where the stars were. So particularly on the black areas of the image, you'll see some artifacts there. Um, and there you go. So at stride 256, you'll get some quite nasty um, artifacts coming on just because it's not it's not working at a, a detailed level. Um, and if we go up to Seda, you'll see that quite clearly there. Um, so what you can do, what I tend to do, um, get a new layer, go right in, and just use the um, spot helium brush you can change the size of the circle by hitting the um, square brackets um, and what you want to make sure is that the size of the brush does definitely encompass the entire area that you want to fix so that's probably that's probably too small what I'd say is about that there Click that down and that basically just kills it off. Does a pretty good job. Don't have to go too crazy with this. Um, purely because later on we are going to add the stars back in. So the stars will pretty much cover the areas. Um, but I do like to kind of just get rid of the main main ones that don't look very good. Um, this is a bit tricky. Uh, you can try and use a spot helium brush to get rid of it. Let's see if that does a good job. I don't think it will. Nah, so it's, it doesn't do a very good job. Um, quite difficult to, to do anything about that. And to be honest with you, um, I've already processed this image before and I, I, I just crop that out. I just get rid of Sadia just because it's too much to work with. Um, so I know I'm not going to bother with that. So I'll just leave it as it is. Uh, okay, cool. So let's say I've gone through the entire image and I've gotten rid of those artifacts that are left over from the Starnet process. And what I'm going to do now is just create a new layer and I'm going to drag the star only image on top. Hit enter and that is literally the stars obviously it's not not usable as it is um, but if we change the blending mode to linear dodge add that will then do a really really nice job of entering the stars onto the image um, and getting rid of all the black areas just from that layer um, you can use other other ones as well so screen works quite well um, light and doesn't it, it kind of gives you like a halo around the stars screen's okay but i do prefer linear dodge add, add. i think that's the best one um, that's it and you can just basically keep going and working on the nebulosity the starless version um, you can keep doing what you need to do with that image and then you can just add the, the stars in at the end Well, we got there in the end. Uh, thanks for sticking all the way through to the end of the video. Uh, if you've got any questions about the process, you're not sure, just uh, leave a comment down below or just get in touch with me on Instagram. Um, also, if you've got any feedback or if you wanna share some tips of your own on how to do this process, then yeah, I'd love to hear from you as well. Um, thanks, see you in the next one.